uh, our friendship goes deep uh, for 30 years and counting. Uh, Pastor David Stanley is one that I have the utmost respect for. And uh, one is because he's a brother beloved. Two, because he is definitely a Christian gentleman. And third of all, he's one of the most progressive pastors that I know, amen, anywhere over the length and breadth of this country. It is a joy to uh, co-labor with him in Macon and Bibb County. Uh, he and I uh, work together on the local level in the association. Uh, we work together when uh, I was an ardent part of the General Missionary Baptist Convention. And Pastor Stanley... Uh, has a little bit of confidence in me, and uh, he has eagerly, along with Union, uh, become a main supporter of the Fellowship Missionary Baptist Convention of the state of Georgia. He and I most recently, I think about two years ago, uh, broke the trend uh, as it relates to the EOC uh, here in Macon. Uh, I don't think there's ever been any preachers on the board of directors. Well, they got two preachers, hey man, on the board of directors, and one is Pastor Stanley and I am the other. So we just co-labor so well and uh, it is a fresh air of relief each time that I'm in his present. Uh, we always can leave each other with fruit uh, for thoughts and uh, help each of us to be better at what we do. But let me say this, out of all of that on the personal side, when I look at him as a preacher, he's a preacher par excellence. Uh, he's a pastor that has a heart for God's people, amen, and a heart for the work that he does. And in pastoring, you've got to be a teacher. Uh, the Bible says you should be apt to teach. And let me tell you something, David Stanley is apt to teach. So without any further delay, Fellowship Missionary Baptist Convention, it is my esteemed pleasure and honor to present the individual that will lead us on providing pastoral leadership in a COVID-19 environment. None other than my friend, our lecturer, Pastor David Stanley Sr. of the Union Baptist Church of Macon, Georgia. Let's receive him with a hearty amen. amen. The Lord has made, and certainly we're going to rejoice and be glad in it, uh, for the Lord has done marvelous things. And even in the midst of this pandemic crisis that we're dealing with, God is still good, and he's still able to perform that which he said that he would. I want to give honor now, amen, to Dr. I. Edwin Mack, the president, amen, of this wonderful and great convention known as the Fellowship Missionary Baptist State Convention Incorporated. Uh, I want to give honor to the vice president, Dr. Daniel Simmons, and to all the other presidents of the various ministries, uh, to the pastors and delegates, and all who share in this wonderful work, I salute you uh, in the name of he that said, if I be lifted up, uh, I draw men unto me. I want to salute the Unionville Baptist Church for hosting this virtual coming together. Uh, we recognize that, as Dr. Fauci said a few months ago, we don't tell the virus what to do. The virus tell us what to do. Amen. And right now it has us on pause. It has us on hold. But we thank God that somebody said where there's a will, there is a way. And we salute Dr. Mack's lovely wife, First Lady Sister Mack, in her absence. And we thank God for the delegates that are present. And we recognize that we're doing this virtually, uh, but we just give God all the honor uh, and the praise. Uh, I was more than happy. I was, I consider myself a soldier of the cross. Amen. I consider myself a servant of the Lord Jesus. And, and I go where he says go without reservation. Wherever he says he want to use me in just a little way. Amen. I'm like Isaiah. Here am I, Lord. Send me. And so I was more than honored, more than elated uh, when the president, Dr. Mack, called me on behalf of the convention and said, as you know, Pastor Stanley, we won't be able to 
come together as we normally do uh, due to what we all know is going on. Uh, but we just feel it's not right if we not present something virtually. And I said, amen. He said, well, with that said, uh, I have an assignment for you. And I said, just give it to me. And I will graciously, with the Lord's help, do the best I can. Amen. And he gave me the topic uh, and the topic uh, that he asked me to share with you all by way of lecture. Amen. Is providing pastoral care in a COVID-19 environment. Providing pastoral care. Amen. And a COVID-19 environment. And then he reminded me in a humorous way. Now, Pastor Stan, I, we, we don't want to go too long now. Amen. Because we got some others coming before you and after you. And we don't want to weary the people. And I agree wholeheartedly. We don't want you to push that off button and, and get on up and walk out the room and forget. Amen. That I'm still alone. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you now for this day. Uh, we thank you for your love and kindness. We thank you that you're still on the throne and you have not forsaken your children. We heard the Apostle Paul who powerfully said, we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. And we know when it's all said and done, we're going to hold our heads up high. And say, what a mighty God we serve. Continue to shower this convention with your power and your blessings. Continue to bless Pastor Mac, President Mac, Vice President Simmons and others. Continue to show them the way that they might do a good work in the name of the Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Allow me to read from the book of St. John. Chapter 10, beginning at verses 7. Then said Jesus unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, and all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved yes, and shall go in and out yes. and find pastor. Yes, the thief yes. cometh not but for to steal and to kill yes. and to destroy. Yes. I am come that they might have life yes. and that they might have it more abundantly. more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. Good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Yes. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd yeah. whose own sheep are not. Yeah. See it the wolf coming yeah. and leave it the sheep and yeah. flee it. Yeah. And the wolf catch it them and scatter it the sheep. Yeah. The hireling flee it yeah. because he is an hireling yeah. and carry not for the sheep. Oh, yeah. I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd. and I know my sheep. And I am known of mine. Yeah. As the Father knoweth me, yeah. even so I knoweth the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. It is from those verses, amen, convention and delegates and saints of God, that I want to embark on this lecture, amen, P providing pastoral care. Yeah in a COVID-19 epidemic. Yeah. Allow me to say that I started pastor in union at the tender age of 33 back in 1987. Yeah. An exciting time, an exciting era yeah. of, of service for pastors and churches. Yeah. And it was not long thereafter, I can't put my finger on the exact year that we were hit Amen. With this epidemic called, amen, the virus, HIV, as it relates to AIDS. And it was devastating. It shook up the world and it had us on edge and it had us nervous and it had us concerned. We didn't know exactly what was going on and how you might contact it. So we were afraid. 
amen, to go in the company of anyone who unfortunately had come down with it. And so it was a, it was a very trying time from a pastor perspective to just deal with that particular epidemic known as HIV. Here we are several years later in the year 2020 dealing with something that surely we've never seen before. A virus, not an epidemic, but a global pandemic that has touched every nation and country in this world and is causing death upon death, untold death, has us wearing masks and gloves and social distancing and once again afraid and rightly so amen to be in the company of strangers and those that we have not been around for a while and so here we are asking ourselves pastors and delegates and uh, leaders how how can we from a pastoral perspective uh, make our presence felt and amen serve the parishioners the congregants of the sheep amen that god has placed us in care of And it is from St. John chapter 10 that I believe God would have those of us, amen, who are pastoring because there's a difference between being a pastor and a preacher or let's say slash minister, amen. The minister does not have the direct responsibility of providing oversight uh, as 1 Peter chapter 5 talks about over a man a flock of God's children Jesus is the great shepherd and he said that in John 10 and those of us that are pastoring we are the under shepherds amen by stewardship God has placed us amen over them to provide spiritual oversight to lead them into green pastures and to carry them to steal waters and to protect them from the predators who are always looking to eat the sheep for supper breakfast as well as lunch amen and so dr mac president mac and others uh, i think that we have three areas three areas quickly that i want to just uh, review for a moment summarize for a moment as it relates to this this assignment that God has called us to, to the pastors that are present in this small gathering, and certainly those of you that are watching virtually, it has been said that the shepherd ought to smell like the sheep. You you, you can't go out into the field as a literal shepherd. You do know David was a shepherd before he became king. He watched over the sheep. If we want God to promote us to higher things, we, we have to learn how to be faithful amen in little things and and you can't go out into the fields literally and be with the sheep all day amen and not take on their odor not not take on their scent amen to not smell them in so much that when you come home the first thing your wife says is uh, no harm intended but you need to hit the shower uh, because I smell the odor of sheep and from a spiritual perspective amen those of us that God have called to pastor our various congregations whatever their name might be amen we we, we supposed to take on the burden of the sheep we supposed to take on their nature we supposed to take on their concerns and so here we are as pastors number one we trying to be safe ourselves Amen. Because we recognize that we too, amen, can come down with the virus. And by but by God's grace, lose our lives. We know we have, amen, another place in God's kingdom. But if the truth be told, we're not trying to get there tomorrow. I think even preachers and pastors will acknowledge, amen, what they used to say on the radio. Everybody want to go to heaven. 
Amen. But, but nobody's in a hurry to get there. Thank God. Hallelujah, somebody. But but so 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 as pastors, here we are caught in this dilemma. Uh, as Paul said, pressed, amen, between two forces because uh, Jesus said the hireling, he fleeth when he see the wolf coming. So as pastors, we, we can't run and hide because we are like doctors and nurses we are like amen first responders we we've, we've kind of got to still be on duty to help see about the sheep and so our first challenge as pastors uh, as shepherds of God's flock is to make sure amen that we are still available amen to help uh, guide them through their concerns. M many of them are mentally discouraged. They're frustrated. And, 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 and the law says to us, the scientist says to us, to social distance. The, the law says to us, stay out of one another's houses and, 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 and to stay out of hospitals. And, and any pastor that's worth his calling, he certainly want to be with his members in bereavement, uh, in sickness, and in other tough cities. I mean, that's why they call us their pastor. Uh, we're, we're not their doctor. We're not their lawyer. We're not their financial. They have people for that. But when they need some spiritual, amen, nourishment, they, they, they look for their pastor. And, and, and we ought to receive that that calling with joy. And so we, we've got to try to make sure that we're protecting ourselves and at the same time ministering to them. I, I, I can say personally that this has, this has been some trying times for me. Amen. I've lost Amen. Five members. Amen. Five members to COVID-19. And it seemed like it, they, they all came right behind one another. And, and, and there I was. There I was trying to, to be there for them. And yet at the same time trying to protect myself. Amen. And that's a, that's a tough dilemma because I'm, I'm used to going to the house. Amen. And paying my respects and sitting with them and having prayer with them and fellowshipping with them. I'm, I'm used to, amen, a full, amen, a home going service. Amen. At the sanctuary of their choice. And all of a sudden we don't have those, those opportunities. We, we can't go by the house uh, as, as we would in the past as, as shepherds, amen. We have graveside services, and, and even with those graveside services, we have to be mindful of what's going on, amen, around us. After all, after all, the pastor got a wife. It, the, the pastor has children, amen, that loves him. And, and, and want him to come home every day, amen, and live and be saved. So even though, he, amen, he might sacrifice himself to some degree, he owe it to his family, a, a, amen, to be as safe, amen, as he can. And so, brother pastors, just allow me to say to you, uh, most of our ministry now is going to come through technology. Uh, we can still pray with them on the phone. I, I don't know how many uh, church members I have prayed with right. amen on the phone not just about COVID-19 but about other issues yeah. amen that they are facing and I'm so glad that that, that same prayer yeah. that God would have honored with me in the hospital yeah. holding their hand yeah. he'll honor that same prayer yeah. Amen. With us on the telephone. Amen. And so I've, I've, I've rejoiced in the fact that even though I can't many times be there with them physically, I can be with them there spiritually and we can have a season of prayer. Amen. Right there on the telephone. And then I can give them good, wholesome counsel advice. Amen. On the telephone and sometimes through texting. Yeah. Amen. And some pastors have even, amen, gone as far as to uh, uh, set up some Zooming services, yeah. amen, where they can engage with their flock. Right. So that's the first challenge, bro, pastors, is yeah. we've got to find that balance. We can't flee. Yeah. Amen. We've got to be there, amen, for the sheep. Right. 
but our safety is also of utmost importance. So find that balance where you can be safe and yet you can still, amen, let your members know I love you and care just as I, matter of fact, I care for you even more now. Amen. I, I, I can't celebrate your birthday like I used to. I can't celebrate your anniversary, but I, I can maybe blow by and blow my horn. Amen. I can put something in the mail for you. Amen. I can let you know, amen, that as your pastor, I'm still here representing, standing in the gap. Yeah, because after all, it's our job as pastors, amen, to point you to Jesus anyway. And, and, and bro, pastors and President Mac, I'm going to say this, and I hope it falls right. I hope it falls in the right way. I think in some way, amen, with this pandemic uh, upon us and, and, and causing us as your, your pastors and your under shepherds, amen, to only be able to go so far is helping you now realize Amen. As a member of the church. Amen. How much more you need Jesus. Amen. Because after all, uh, it's Jesus. Amen. Our all in all. It's Jesus who's omnipresent. It's, it's Jesus, all oh, shucks, y'all. It's Jesus who is sovereign and omnipotent and rules and super rule. He's the one. Amen. That woke you up this morning. And, and, and so what he has done is just placed us as pastors to give you some visible representation. Amen. Of who he is. So, bro, pastors, I salute you. Those of you that are still standing right there and hanging in there, smelling like the sheep, uh, feeling their pain, uh, taking on their burdens and doing everything you can. Amen. To stay engaged with them. The second challenge we have right. as it relates to pastors, amen, in this pandemic environment is making sure the sheep got to be fed. Sheep still got to be fed. Yeah. A -a 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 amen. That first 10 minutes was dedicated to the health issues, to the, to the bereavement issues, yeah. to those things that as pastors we are often called on to do. Amen. But the sheep have to be fed. And that, that, that's why the shepherd would get up. Amen. And lead them out. Amen. Into green pastures. And, 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 and that's why the sheep was able to say. Amen. And my cup runneth over. Amen. Because the shepherd. Uh, you, you know, ain't nothing more beautiful to a sheep than at the end of the day to have a couple of toothpicks, yeah. amen, picking out his teeth because, amen, the shepherd done provided some, some good eating. And, and, and so as pastors, yeah. it's our responsibility to still make sure yeah. that our sheep are being fed spiritually, yeah. amen. Thank God. You know, the Internet has its negative uh, vibes. Uh, Facebook has its negative vibes. Uh, people are using it for all kinds of evil motives and evil purposes. But I thank God that it's here. Uh, bro, pastors, bro, president, can you imagine what we would be trying to do 20 years ago if the pandemic had hit? We would be lost. But, but thank God with Facebook and virtual worship yeah. uh, every, Sunday, every Sunday, whether we pre-record or whether we do it by live. Some pastors are pre-recording, others are doing it live, but we are able to feed our flock. Yeah, yeah we, we're able, amen, to let them hear our voice. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. They know my voice. Amen. The shepherds need the sheep need to hear the shepherd's voice. And and so I'm so glad that God has this mechanism, this yeah. this avenue whereby on Sunday morning, whether recorded or whether live, we are able to come before our people. And and they are able now and I think they're getting sparred too. I think they yeah, they they're getting sparred now. They hanging around the house in their pajamas and they flip flops, amen. They don't they, they don't have to worry about that sad to have to they don't they don't have to worry about the fingernails and all the other things that that they would have had i think these ladies are enjoying this time we we gonna have a challenge brother pastors to get them up and get them back to the house of the lord 
<laughs> when this thing is over because, uh, amen, they enjoying this ride. They, they ain't telling it. They ain't admitting it. But they enjoying this ride. Amen. And, 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 but it's so good that, that we are able, amen, to provide virtual worship service, virtual Bible study, amen, so that the sheep can still hear the shepherd's voice and they can still be nourished spiritually. The soul has to be fed. Jesus talked about the, the devil coming to steal, kill, and scatter the flock. And if we're not careful, if we don't watch that rascal, and I'm talking about Satan, I can call him that. Amen. He'll scatter the flock. Amen. During in this season, during in this time. And I'm so glad that God has it fixed. Amen. Well, once again, as pastors, uh, we can come before our people and still preach God's word. Amen. Still teach them on Wednesday night so that they won't, amen, get unaccustomed. Amen. And scattered to the shepherd's voice. Here's one thing, brother pastors, we do have to mind, remind our sheep about and I say this not out of fear and not out of jealousy but due to now everybody having gone to virtual worship and virtual Bible study amen you got some shysters amen that don't love the sheep you got a whole lot of people now that are on YouTube and, 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 and presenting things uh, virtually Amen. That's not biblical. That's not sound. That's not right. And so President Mag, President Simmons and others, amen, we have to be ever so mindful to remind our people. Now, we don't mind you, you know, tuning in here, there, and yonder, picking up some other fellas. Amen. Picking up some other stuff. But I, I heard something a long time ago that stayed with me even before I went into ministry. I heard a preacher say, uh, too many cooks in the kitchen. Amen. Or make the children sick. Amen. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too many cooks in the kitchen. And that's what I like about that old cry. Mama didn't let anybody in her kitchen. No, 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 no. Mama didn't. And just like as pastors, we are careful about who we invite to our churches when everything is normal to do our anniversaries and our special services. We bring in people that we know have the same mind we have, the same doctrine, the same spirit, because we recognize if you let the wrong person, you give that person the microphone and the pulpit, that person can say stuff that it'll take you five years to clean up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and so we have to remind our members in love, not out of fear, you know, not out of jealousy, or envy, but we have to remind them, be careful. Amen. To who you're tuning into. Amen. Virtually and so forth through the weekend and all day Sunday and stuff because you can get a hold of something. Amen. You can And, and see, that one thing the shepherd used to do uh, in the literal days of David when he was a shepherd, they would get up and go out into the field before they brought the sheep out. And they would look for poison. Grass and stuff uh, of, uh, of things that the sheep could get a hold of uh, that would kill the sheep. Uh, if nothing else, then to make him sick all day. That they would they would weed out the stuff, you know, to make sure that when the sheep the sheep came out there, uh, they didn't have to worry about eating the wrong thing. And so during in this virtual season, uh, as pastors in this pandemic, uh, we stand before our people and then we remind them, uh, can't control everything you're doing at home, but be careful, amen, as to who you're tuning in to, amen, that you don't pick up, amen, some pause and stuff. And then lastly, the third area uh, that we have to cover uh, as pastors during in this COVID-19 pandemic is to make sure that our churches, amen, stay afloat financially. Right. Amen. The church still has bills. Right. 
and we have to continually it ain't because we're greedy for money it's not because we don't care but we have to constantly remind uh, the sheep that even though you are at home and even though we are not occupying the building physically every Sunday that there are still bills that have to be paid there are still obligations yeah. amen that still have to be made and so we have to continually encourage amen our members our devoted lawyer sheep uh, if if things have not fallen by the wayside continue to support the church financially yeah. so we can continue to do the things that we have to do financially and it has blessed me to hear several pastors in one-on-one -on -one conversations that acknowledge, amen, that their members have stepped up to the plate and are even going beyond Amen. What they used to do. And that's good news to, to hear pastors saying, Reverend, to be honest with you, amen, the offering is a little up. Amen. More so than what it was when we was mean physically. And I think what's happening, God is proving himself to be good and faithful. And, 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 and not only is he moving on the hearts of our members, but he's moving on the hearts of people who are not even connected to our churches. Amen. To send donations. Amen. While they are watching our virtual service, the Holy Spirit said, now send them a hundred dollar check. Amen. Send them five hundred dollars. Send them a thousand dollars. And so we have God moving on the hearts. Amen. Of people who probably would have never given to the church. Amen. To just say, cut that church a check. Uh, get on a uh, give a fire. Uh, amen. A cash app. And transfer something out of your checking account to the church checking account. We give God the glory. The flip side of that is as pastors. Because we care. And it's our job to look out for the sheep. During this COVID-19, we have to be ever so careful to make sure that members who are part of our church, faithful members, lawyer members, who might have caught a bad break, the job they had, amen, closed down, their hours have been cut, amen, their salary is not what it used to be, and now they are struggling trying to stay afloat themselves and so as pastors we, we 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 just have to make sure that we are there for them we can might can't can't do as much as we want to do but at least to let them know however we can help you get through this financial storm Amen. Then we're going to do it. And that pleases me. That It, it blessed me to hear uh, President Mack call me a few weeks ago and said, look, uh, uh, we got a truck coming in and, and we're going to be giving out some food. Yeah. Amen. Good food, not junk, yeah. but we're going to be giving out quality boxes of food. Yeah. Amen. To people who, who've lost their jobs, people who, who have children and they don't know where they're going to get their next meal from. And, 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 and I want to be able to share some of that with your church so you can give out some on the east side and, and, and that's what I call pastoring amen in this COVID-19 pandemic looking out for people who are struggling uh, financially who are struggling amen not knowing where their next meal is coming from because if the truth be told bro pastors all of us have members amen who have had to take a hit uh, they lost their jobs altogether. They had their hours cut. Uh, they applied for the unemployment check, and and Trump, uh, I don't want to call his name. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the check ain't coming in. Amen. And, and and they can't get no help. Amen. And so, however, however, the church, amen, can be there to make sure that that member. Don't have their car repossessed. Don't, don't lose their house. Amen. Have food to eat and clothes to wear. So, bro, Pastor, those are the three challenges uh, that I feel like we have to be mindful of as it relates to 
pastoring, amen, during this COVID-19 pandemic, pastoral care. We have to be there for our members, amen, available, even though we're trying to be safe ourselves, amen. We can't bail out on them. Uh, we got to let them know as much as I can. I can't go but so far. But as much as I can, I'm going to be there for you, whether it's by phone, by Zoom, by texting or what have you. I'm going to be there for you. Amen. And then secondly, amen, we have to make sure that uh, we're there for them to uh, continue to preach God's word, uh, continue to do the feed them. That's it. Feed them. And then thirdly, we got to make sure that we protect the interests of the church and not let the church go afoul. Uh, financially because uh, there are obligations. A lot of churches have monthly notes. Yeah. Amen. Mine is one of them. Yeah. And the bank ain't sent us not one letter saying y'all can chill out till the yeah. pandemic is over. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. And so... <laughs> I wish they would send me a check and just say, just chill out. But they, they know every month. Amen. They, they are looking for them, their money. Amen. Because we made an obligation to them and vice versa. So God bless you. Thank you for giving me these few 25, 30 minutes uh, to stand before you. Amen. Uh, I will take maybe one or two questions or comments because it was acknowledged uh, that we could do that. Uh, but I dare not say that we'll, we'll go over any time that's been allotted to us. Amen. If there's any, uh, any comment, a question, and keep in mind my theme uh, was providing pastoral care in a COVID-19 environment. Amen. Uh, Dr. Stanley, I know in that script, uh, 10th chapter of uh, St. John, it mentioned a shepherd and a hireling. What, what are the differences? The hireling is just there for his profit. He's there for his hourly wage. The sheep don't belong to him. They belong to somebody else. And so um, he looks at it from a professional perspective. This is what I do for a living. Give me my check. But when he sees the wolf coming, He's going in the opposite. That's what separates the hireling from the true shepherd. Uh, the, 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 the hireling, when he sees danger coming, he's moving on out of the way because to him it's just an occupation. But when you go to David, who was taking care of his father's sheep, it was personal. And David testified that God gave him the power on two occasions to defeat a lion and a bear. And he said, if God gave me a lion, if he gave me a bear, I know he'll give me go lion. <laughs> Y'all better talk to me. But that's the difference. Amen. Now, when you put that into the realm of us as pastors, we recognize that the church compensates us financially. But they do so. Because they know we have a love for them. So it's a perfect balance. It's a perfect marriage. My salary comes from Union Baptist. But I've proven over 33 years, amen, that they have my heart. As long as they don't hear again, try to abuse me or take advantage of me. And so that's why I'm doing everything I can not to be a hireling and bail out on them when they need me the most. I'm going to do everything I can to protect my safety with the virus. But however else I can meet you halfway, I'll be there. That's right, yeah. Thank you so much. Okay. Reverend Stanley, I don't have a question, but I would like to say something. Okay. Uh, our pastor has, has withheld everything that you said today. Mm. And I tell you, it's really been a pleasure. The COVID-19 has been hard for everyone. It has. But I tell you, it has, it has been so spiritual mm. for us here at the church. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Mac, for all you've done for us. Amen. 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 I gave him $5 to sit in the <laughs> You got one more. Okay, one. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, Dr. Stanley, thank you very much for, um, uh, for breaking it down as you did, uh, especially during the virtual part of it. Um, we appreciate that very much. Uh, things have changed a lot. 
and um, you really uh, took that scripture and broke it down to where it showed how the shepherd does care for the sheep. And we know our true shepherds. Mm -hmm. And so, I, 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 again, I have to say thank you to President Mack as well, my Amen. pastor. Amen. Uh, but thank you to all of those pastors who That's care it. about their sheep Amen. and who are not howling. Amen. Oh, thank you. God bless you. Thank you all for the comments. Thank you for the questions. Thank you, President Mack, President Simmons, in his absence, for just being able to have these few minutes to share as best as I could. Amen. Some of it was personal because there was a period I was getting the phone call every other day telling me that somebody had passed sometimes from COVID-19 sometimes from something else and it weighed on me heavily and there were some members who was a little concerned and I said to them you know at the end of the day God is going he's going to shelter me yeah. amen if I don't do anything foolish he's going to shelter me because after all the shepherd ought to smell like the sheep God bless you